Um, where have I gone? Well, we're trying to get the shape of this and be as accurate as possible, right? So my very first step before I put uh, pen to actual graph is I differentiate. Because I know in advance I'm going to have to put the turning points on this, right? If there are turning points. So I've differentiated here, and I've said for stationary points, I'll find where the derivative is zero. So that's where I've gotten to solve that, okay? So I know I've got two stationary points. After that, I need to know more specifically, well, where are they, okay? Now, it's easy to see that when x equals zero, y is also equal to zero. So that's why I haven't put down any working for that. But when x is equal to minus two, I wasn't confident enough to do it in my head, so I just wanted to check out the numbers, okay? Now, this is at four, okay? So when you plot this, this is minus two, four, and the other one I said was the origin, zero, zero. So now you know you can put these two points on, just like intercepts, as important places that you need to go through. Okay. So on the graph, I'm not sure if you can still see the original, but at these two positions, these two stationary points, I draw a little horizontal line. Okay? That's just to make sure when I actually connect up all the dots, um, it has the right curvature at that point, and it's smooth. Okay? This is the kind of situation that I want to avoid. I've got one at minus two, four, and one at zero, and then as I start to graph, I draw my line down, and then I realize I'm too close, and you get a sort of like sharp kind of shape, okay? It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be so rigid. Uh, you need to have a more smooth curve, okay? So, I put them on. I also labeled, I mean, even though I haven't tested on either side, you can see by the values, right? This one is above this one. So this one will be the max, and this one will be the min, okay? So that's why I can see I've labeled them so, okay? You should distinguish between them. And then I had my intercepts, and after that, that was it. So all I did was, from here, I drew my curve up to make sure I had the right curvature on this side, and then I connected the dots. That was it. Okay? Now, when you get to this one, um, this has got an extra problem with it, because as I think I mentioned this earlier, that um, this doesn't factorize neatly, unlike, unlike this. Okay? Um, something else I forgot to mention before I get onto this one. If we'd given you x squared times x plus 3, right, and we've given this to you last year, say, you would have known enough to say, well, this will have two roots, 0 and minus 3, but the two roots are not the same kind of root, right? We would have given a special name to the root at 0. We would have said it's a double root. It's like it goes there and it just touches and then it goes off, okay? So a double root, now you have a better way to describe that, right? It means you have a stationary point and a root at the same time. Okay. In other words, y equals 0 and dy on dx equals 0. When those coincide, that's what we call a double root. Okay. Okay. Just so you're connecting the dots. Now, let's come back to this one. Because it doesn't factorize nicely, okay, I proceed with my derivative because this is still going to give me useful information anyway. Okay. So I solve it. This is where my stationary points are going to be. I just know some y values, so I sub back into the original function. And here's my two stationary points. Again, you can guess, uh, you know, apart from the fact that the coefficient of x cubed is positive, so it's going to increase and go off into infinity. So this one is going to be higher, this one's going to be lower. Okay? Now, I'll also notice that this is 10, this is 6, and my intercept, uh, my y-intercept, is 8. It's right in between, right? So you have this symmetry around here. Now, I want you to have a look at your graph if you've already drawn this, okay? And check to see that if you were to... Um, hide this axis down here, and just look up here. It ought to look like an odd function, okay? That's because this part here is an odd function, and then the 8 just moves it up. That's all it's done, okay? So if it doesn't look symmetrical around here, for instance, one part looks higher, or it's sort of skewed to one side, you're going to have some issues, okay? It needs to be symmetrical. So I've got uh, 10, 8, 6, you can see the drop. Uh, I don't know what this value is. Uh, and there's not really a nice, neat way to find it because, like I said, the cubic function is really terrible. Um, so, I, in this question, you would leave it off, okay? But when you can find it, you should, okay? <coughs>